start rolling. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, be here today and run this uh, webinar. Oh, I'm sorry, it's freezing in Kingston, Sheila. Uh, 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 yeah, it's always it's always colder in the rest of Canada. Um, 37 degrees out. That's not too bad. Vancouver, Washington. You're pretty close to where I'm at. Um, probably very similar weather. Um, but yeah, really excited to be here today talking about benefits and wellness and all that kind of good stuff with John um, and do all that kind of stuff, uh, doing a couple of quick introductions. So for you, all those of you who have joined our webinars in the past, you know who I am. My name is Noah Water. I'm the head of people here over at Gusto, uh, which means that I kind of do all things HR, people operations, recruitment, all that good stuff. Um, and then I also get to talk with uh, awesome guests like John. Um, and if you've attended some of our other webinars, those folks as well and the webinars we're going to be having in the future. So really excited. And now I'm going to sort of pass it over to John so he can do a proper introduction. Sure. Thank you so much, Noah and Gusto team for having me. I'm John Shushani. I'm the co-founder of June, the flexible wellness benefits platform that employees actually use and appreciate. Um, have been spending the last 10 or so years at the intersection of health and wellness and tech. Uh, and really excited to share some trends that we're seeing in the market with you today. Um, and with that, I'm going to kind of turn things over to John so he can start sharing his screen and talk about all the great things that June has seen in the marketplace and how we can really make a, a real impact with our wellness and benefits program. So John, take it away. Awesome. Okay, great. Uh, so thank you again all for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us today and to Gusto for coordinating this. Um, again, excited to share some trends we're seeing in the market. The last two years have been a very interesting time, to say the least, uh, working in and around HR tech and people ops. Uh, between the pandemic, the great resignation, the exodus to distributed work, and other social and cultural shifts we're seeing in the market, for example, uh, mental health finally becoming less, uh, less stigmatized or destigmatized. There are a lot of interesting things to cover. Today, in particular, um, we're going to be covering all things employee benefits and how you can go above and beyond, uh, beyond traditional benefits to make sure that your people feel supported and taken care of. So, you may have seen this not too long ago. Um, and it's not the prettiest thing to look at. Uh, companies want to be generous and take care of their employees, but unfortunately, many times it's, it, it looks a little bit like this. Um, if you work in HR, if you work in people ops, you probably spent a nice chunk of the last few months looking through spreadsheets like this, focusing on renewals and new benefits for 2022. Um, but who actually looks at this? I, I don't know. Um, the truth is that most of the HR and people, people that we talk to don't really like this process. Employees usually don't really love it or understand it, and that's probably done by design. And the generosity, the time and effort that we spend with these renewals sometimes go, goes unrecognized by employees. Um, so, so employees don't really sometimes recognize the value of the generosity and the added bonus that we do from a year to year basis. Uh, we'd love to kick it back to you, Noah, just for a sec and for you to tell us how it's been navigating these types of like renewal health insurance type experiences for your team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, like John said, we've all been in this position. We've all been in this world where you're, you know, for, for American uh, people that are joining, like every year, you got to go through this. You got to go, okay, what's being boosted? What's going to cost us more? How much more, uh, how many more of the premiums are we going to pay? How much is that going to cost us? And if you have a really good broker, then they'll kind of help you navigate this, this, but it also, you're looking at this, which is just not a fun experience. And you're spending hours, weeks, months, worrying about your renewal and in Canada it's not much different um you're just you're just dealing with it and it's it becomes a headache and then you got to figure out how you're going to actually communicate this to your teams and so like personally it's one of the worst times of the year is navigating the renewals of your insurance and like hoping to god that it's not going to go up too much and that you're not going to get just massively dinged uh, and have all these expenses come at you and come your way totally totally and and the 
the thing to say is like, we're not anti-healthcare. These healthcare plans are, are important. They become table stakes. Uh, they're, they're essential and important, especially when you get sick. Uh, but something that's become a greater focus for a, a growing number of us is being proactive about our health, uh, preventative care, doing things every day, movement, eating a nutritious and balanced diet, maybe doing some meditation, getting better sleep in order to get sick less often. So we don't have to engage with that system as much. So we can have better energy overall. And so we can live better. And the, the chances are that most of your employees, if they are you know, young and healthier uh, employees, are not going to the doctor that often, uh, which, is, which is one of the reasons that they may not even recognize some of those updates from a year-to-year -year basis that you make when you've invested that time to be more generous with the, with the health plans. And what we're noticing is that employers... Uh, spent a lot of Q4 focusing on those traditional benefits, the healthcare benefits, and now are spending time throughout the year thinking about things like culture and employee uh, wellness. And this chart is one that we created sort of playing off of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Abraham Maslow, uh, you know, renowned psychologist that, that built that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, sort of speaking to the fact that we don't get to our... Uh, needs around uh, you know, human development and self-actualization -actual before we have the basics taken care of, such as food, water, shelter. So to us, this is sort of speak, this pyramid is speaking to the fact that healthcare, salary, those things are things that we all need. And those are the base of the pyramid. And from there, we can add and layer on top additional things to take care of our employees and support them in order to take our employee experience to the next level and in turn being a, a better employer that can have better retention rates, attract better talent, et cetera. So that is it. Uh, this is a quote for many workers, managers have a more significant impact uh, than, than their physicians on their physical and mental health. Uh, we all have been seeing more and more that our work environment impacts our health tremendously and that we're all living in a historical moment where workers are actually taking action because of this sentiment more than ever before. You know, the great resignation is here and people are voting with their feet and leaving companies where they do not feel supported. So many of the HR leaders that we're speaking to every day decide to launch a wellness survey in order to figure out what employees actually need. So I'd love to do a quick poll and see what percentage of y'all have rolled out a wellness survey in the last 12 months. So you, should all, you should all be able to see this. We'd love to, you know, let's get as many people participating so we can get a nice sort of idea of what's, what's happening in the world. Maybe give it a couple more, maybe another 10 seconds, try and get those last few people. All right, all right, great. I think we're pretty much there. We got about 80% participation. Let's share those results. All right. So we're getting most people, it's a, it's a no. And we got a few yeses okay. and some it's happening. <laughs> So that's all good. Uh, so, you know, some of the companies that we talk to have and some haven't. Uh, with many of the companies that do roll out a wellness survey, they end up taking action and rolling out a single benefit, whether it's a gym reimbursement or a masterclass subscription. But then they come back to us and they're like, you know, employees are still unhappy uh, with, with the benefit. And, and we like to ask the question, why? Why is that? And one of the reasons that we've seen in the market is that oftentimes the benefits that are, that are rolled out as a result of the survey are difficult to access and redeem and sometimes can end up feeling more like a burden uh, than a benefit. Noah, have you had any sort of experiences with sort of this sentiment of like rolling out a survey, doing one benefit, and then seeing that employees are still unappreciative or ungrateful or happy with the, what you've done? 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, we 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 chatted a bit about this when we did our our, our sort of run through, but like. I've had the experience of like exactly this, like you run the survey, you ask people what they want and you kind of get it. Like people want to like a gym reimbursement or a health stipend or something like that, but you're managing it with spreadsheets or like an Expensify or something like that, where people have to submit receipts. I remember like we had one or we had like one or two engineers who just never submitted anything. And I knew they were going to the gym and I knew they were doing these things. And so I just asked them like, why are you not using the stipend? Like you're, you're literally leaving thousands of dollars on the table every year and they're like it's just too much effort like I just I can't be bothered to keep my receipts and then like send an email or take a pdf photo of it and log it in Expensify or like email it to the accounting team I just it's too much effort you're asking me to do too much and then I just I don't care enough to actually use yeah. it now. you know it's like and like to be frank we we thought we had a pretty good benefits program but like only about 50 percent of people used it because they had to submit the receipts for it and they had to go through this manual process to to actually get get the money back and most people were just like no i don't care that much yeah it it blows our mind because all of us are dealing with something or or have certain things that we might want to work on physically mentally financially and when we see that employees are not using those types of benefits, we really ask ourselves why. And one of the big reasons is user experience. Uh, in addition to that, one of the other things that we, we've we seen in the market is that wellness isn't one size fits all. So to go back to that masterclass uh, example, one of the things that we saw with one client is they ended up rolling out a survey like this, the one that you see on the right side of the screen. You know, What would you like to have access to? And what they saw was that everyone wanted something a little bit different. Some people wanted to focus on upskilling themselves. Other folks wanted to focus on finding their inner Zen peace uh, through med meditation apps. Other people wanted to work on fitness. Uh, so they saw that employees wanted all these different things. But then the executive team said, no, let's just roll out masterclass. Let's, let's buy $10,000 of masterclass subscriptions for our team. And then... They, they looked at that spend and they looked at the utilization and they saw no one um, was using the benefit. And that's because employees are all dealing with different things at different life stages. You might have some uh, uh, employees that have just become parents. You have other employees that are uh, newly grad, uh, out of school as uh, just entering the workforce. And Many of you are HR people and you've ran surveys and you know that every, everyone's going to have a different answer as to what they want. And some people might not use that benefit because it doesn't feel personalized. And for you, rolling out something that does feel personalized and meaningful is really hard to implement. So what we recommend, though, is still trying to take that feedback into internally internalizing it and trying to be as flexible as possible when you roll out a benefit like this. John, I'm just going to jump in really quickly. We had, a, we had a question in the chat from Connor, just like, where does financial wellness fall in the spectrum of value and importance to employers and employees? And I think I, I want to bring it up right now because I think this is the perfect opportunity to figure it out because it's, like said, it's different for everyone. It's different for different companies and it's different for different populations. And so rolling out a survey like this and having that as one of your lines of someone to pick of like, I want something around financial wellness or financial literacy and people can mark how important that is to them. And then you get that pulse for your organization of like, oh, okay, like 20% of my people, this, they rated this really high. So maybe we should look at something like a 401k match or a 401k program or look at a, um, like just a financial literacy program or how like something that like, Show, shows that we're actually listening to our, our, our team. Totally, totally. And I think another, another thing that we've seen sort of in this space is that a lot of these things cost money. And so relieving a little bit of the financial pressure from someone investing in their professional and personal growth is in some ways also a financial wellness benefit in, in, in itself as well. Um, but yeah, we are definitely seeing that employers and employees want a little bit more of an investment in terms of understanding their finances 
Uh, 401k match is a big one. We're also seeing student loan repayment. Unfortunately, folks in their 30s and 40s sometimes are still uh, struggling with, uh, with student debt. Um, but you know, rolling out a student debt, uh, student loan repayment to all your employees and then only having a fraction of employees actually engage also speaks to the fact that your workforce is diverse. So that's one of the things that we'd love to highlight here is that offering a great people experience is fundamental to growth. And that variety in terms of what people need, the fact that X percentage want this and Y percentage want this is actually a good thing. And it means that your team is becoming and hopefully growing more diverse. And our recommendation with that diversity is to try and offer something that is more inclusive, more flexible. You know, you need to have an insurance plan, but if you want to be competitive and want to empower employees, you should have benefits that work for everyone. So there's this new category of wellness and lifestyle benefits that help people access and subsidize the things that they need and use every day. So some, some of your employees might want to start eating healthy, but they don't have a blender in the kitchen. So with flexible wellness and lifestyle benefits, you can help them buy that blender. And it's a new, especially in this distributed environment, it's a new way to create that employer-employee appreciation because we used to have the office to do that. You know, you had a, a nice bean bag, you had nitro on tap, and now there's this way of creating that relationship with your employees as they're working from home. So a couple key takeaways, and then I see, is there another question in the chat? No, no, that was just no. that was me dropping a, a resource for financial literacy that I know a few people oh. have been really happy with and in, in, awesome. in, the, in the HR world. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we've also done a partnership with, uh, with Betterment for 401ks. So if anyone, I can drop that in the chat as well, or some, uh, or someone from my team, if they're around, could drop that in the chat as well, and, and we'd be happy to connect you with their team. So a couple of key takeaways, and then again, we'd love to open the floor up to questions. First is that health isn't just a Q4 initiative. It's something that we can and should focus on all year round in order to get the most out of employees. Uh, there's a growing, growing research on the fact that happier, healthier employees are more productive and more engaged. Two is tapping your workforce for inspiration. For many of the folks who haven't run a wellness survey, um, we have a resource that we're gonna include in the follow-up in terms of uh, checking in with employees, understanding their needs, and then learning how to take that, take that feedback and put it into action. And then finally is facilitating that diversity with flexibility. So your people have different needs. As you grow, those needs are going to evolve and, learn, and figuring out ways to personalize the employee experience so people feel supported and taken care of. And just a little on, on us, um, we've seen that those flexible benefits can be administered in a variety of ways. Uh, as Noah uh, mentioned, they could be done through spreadsheets, through expense reports, through a variety of means. Um, the way that we've approached this is this through the set it and benefit technology where all employ you'll design a program, employees will connect their debit or credit card to June, they'll go out and they'll spend. Our platform will automatically pick up when employees have spent within the categories that you've selected. And then every month employees will get that automated reimbursement. So. What we've tried to take into consideration is removing the friction in that user experience piece that we mentioned of people not using their wellness and lifestyle benefits, and then also the inclusion uh, in terms of making this ultra flexible, opening it up to any gym or yoga studio in the world, for example. Thank you again, um, and I'll pause there just to see if there's any other questions that come up or any other points for discussion. Yeah, uh, and and. John, I'd love to hear just like also how, like as in, I know as HR, we often spend so much time sort of like in the in the back room discussing these things and planning them out and getting the feedback. And then like, like great, we've got this great program. Let's roll it out. How do you help clients 
roll out their benefits program? Like, how do you make sure that they're communicating all of this really well to their teams? Because I think, I think that like, that's one of the hardest parts of implementing a new program, any new program really is like the communication piece and making sure people are actually hearing what you're saying and, and are getting access to the, like the, the things that we're building for them. Yeah. And that's, that, that's a great point. And that's part of the reason that companies are using our platform is because when you put this, pro, these programs together, sort of piecemeal, um, you don't, and don't have a, like a platform to administer it. You don't really get that additional level of support. So communication and engagement is a, is something that we really try to focus on. So the first piece is sitting down in what we call an admin workshop and helping an employer configure their program based off of their budget and their values. So we'll look at whether they have any existing programs or whether there's something new that they want to do. Maybe it's about reallocating budgets. It's looking at what they really want to highlight in their program and what they don't want, what they might want to exclude. From there, we'll build a bunch of resources and launch materials for the company. Uh, we'll build them uh, pre-recorded webinars or and even maybe do a live webinar if they want to get their team together on an all hands. So we can present June to them. And then we basically kind of become their like outsource wellness concierge. You know, a lot of the companies, maybe even in, in this group are competing for talent now against much bigger companies that literally have like a director of wellness on staff. So we kind of come in and are this partner for them in that any questions that the employees have about navigating their wellness journeys, we can answer and we can make recommendations for where they can go. At the end of every, every month, we also check in with employees if they haven't used their benefit and kind of just remind them and ping them that it's there to make their lives better. And then finally, the last piece is there's going to be new employees that join the company as well. So also developing a strategy for having new employees that are being onboarded to really get that information. And so it's not like you learn about it through one of your employees, but you learn about it during your onboarding experience, which really helps increase the utilization and engagement. Awesome. And, and I'd love to like hear your opinion on like what the thing that I always hear in other HR circles and talking to, you know, people in my network is like, everyone wants to know what the industry standard is for utilization, right? Like I want to, I, I want to benchmark, am I doing better or worse than the industry standard of utilization? Like, so, so what have you seen? Like, what, what do you typically see? Like, what is a good utilization rate for an organization? I'm sure it's different for like an enterprise grade company that yeah. has 5,000 employees versus like a startup that has, 100 to 200 employees? Yeah, that's a great question. So what, what we've seen is when companies are doing this manually or using a point solution, so maybe partnering with a single gym in New York City or a group of, or a cert, one service like ClassPass or Headspace, uh, participation is in the single digits to maximum 20% of employees. So one out of five employees using it. Um, we're seeing upwards of 70% uh, employees using June. Um, so are really trying to go from very low participation to you, this being utilized by a majority uh, of employees. Um, that, that single digit participation is also what you'll see with point solutions that are focused on behavioral health or MSK or financial wellness or, or fertility is those speak really, uh, really specifically to specific parts of your, your workforce and your demographic, whereas we're trying to get a little bit more of a catch-all and give employees that flexibility to, in one month, decide to focus on wellness, in another month, maybe decide to focus on learning and development. So it's really flipping the model on its, on its head. What are you seeing right now with, with your program in terms of engagement for your wellness programs um on our so we have a mental wellness provider and then we have our health spending and wellness spending account we've sort of tried to take a, a similar approach of like keeping it flexible so here's your money do whatever you want with it and so in the six months since we've rolled it out <clears throat> we've seen i'd say probably a 50 to 60 percent participation rate in like the health spending and wellness spending account. And then on the mental health side of things, because we have a specific provider, it's a little bit lower than we'd like to see in all honesty. Um, we're kind of giving it six months 
Um, and we launched in September. So we're getting close to that six month mark of like, okay, do we reassess and pull that money out and put it into just mm. the, you know, the, the wellness spending account and just give people more money to spend on their own counselors or headspace apps or whatnot, or do we keep trying to promote it and get more people using it? And so we're, we're in that area of like, okay, let's, let's, let's reassess. Let's see what's going on because yeah. you know, we heard pretty loud and clear that mental wellness was really important to our team. And so we tried this one platform that had pretty good flexibility. Like you got 10 free sessions of consulting. You didn't have to pay anything. And there was a huge network of counselors and therapists and psychologists that you could sort of tap into. Um, and, and a year also got some financial literacy and legal literacy in, uh, as well. So we were pretty happy with it. But that utilization is not where, yeah. where it's at, where we want it. Is that 10 therapy sessions a year? A year, yeah. Yeah. And then if an employee wants to re-up and, and get a little bit more, could they pay for it out of pocket? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it's at a discounted rate. So it's like, here's 10 free. And then anything after this is discounted by like 40%. Got it. Yeah. Got it. That's what we're seeing. Um, the other thing that I'd love to know about is this like, and I don't know if you have actual data around this or if you just have like some like qualitative data, but like, what are people saying about how this type of program affects their ENPS scores? Because that's kind of like, that's the benchmark that we kind of like rate ourselves of how well we're doing is like, how is our ENPS score? Like, how are employees feeling? Let's throw, we roll out our monthly pulse surveys, see what people are doing. And then like, have you, have you seen that like, or are you talking to your clients about like, okay, run your survey. And that's your benchmark. And then after June has been implemented or another provider that provides flexible benefits, how does that change? How does that EMPS score change? Does it go up? Does it stay the same? It does it fluctuate. I'd love to hear how to kind of like what you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. There's, so we don't have hard numbers or like hard data to support that, but we're overall as a trend, seeing it go up for our employers. Many of the employers that are using June today are already companies that are, uh, very forward thinking and already rated uh, high rated employers or, or top rated employers on pl platforms like Glassdoor and others and are already seeing higher culture amp. We, ha we definitely have some others that have similar to the wellness survey that I showed earlier running something like an engagement survey through culture amp or lattice or another platform, seeing that there's certain things that they can work on. Um, whether it's around employee burnout or whether it's around employees recommending that company to their friends, those scores can usually be a little bit low. And then as we roll out June, we'll check, we'll have them run an another survey and we've definitely seen those scores go up. Um, something else that we do through the platform itself um, that's in a little bit of a beta, but is definitely going to become more of a, more of a core uh, part of the product experience is actually asking employees um, hey, how, how much has June helped you with your wellness? Um, how, what has been a hindrance before? Has that gone away? And checking in with employees every three to six months in order to see how that's evolving over time. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of like all the, all the questions that I had. Um, the, I, I want to kind of like throw it back to the audience. Um, any other questions for John or myself or kind of, wellness benefits uh focus would love to just have a chance to answer those questions and and talk a little bit more about this so i'll just kind of give it give it a couple more minutes throw it in chat throw it in q a uh, those are, are all being monitored <laughs> this is the first time i've seen the nominate your star employees yeah so this this is a little something that and and before we kind of leave, uh, something that like we we're kind of doing over here at Gusto, and so um, I know we don't have any more questions yet, but I'd love to just say again, thanks, thanks, John, for taking your time talking about this, talking about like the whole this holistic sort of idea around wellness and benefits and health, and how it's not just like you said, like I got my health benefits and my insurance and a couple other programs kind of pieced together, and that's it, I'm good. Uh, but really providing something that's flexible and really provides to the diverse workforce that we're all we're all seeing now that we all have in our yeah. in our companies. Um, one I thing that we're doing at Gusto, and I just wanted to kind of like highlight really yeah, quickly please. before we go away, is it's called CultureStars.gusto.com. And so what this really is is that like 
we're a recognition provider. We really promote the culture of recognition and recognizing employees for the amazing contributions that they have in our companies every single day. And so even if you're not using Gusto or you're using a different provider or you're not using anything at all, culturestars.gusto.com is a way to recognize some of those amazing employees and kind of like shout it at the mountaintop kind of deal of like, here's someone on our team that has done an amazing job. Um, and we really want to like highlight for highlight that. And we'll give them a $50 Gusto gift card to, you know, redeem at, you know, our thousands of different merchant locations. And then we're doing a sort of uh, best sort of story at the end of the quarter. And whoever wins that sort of story, will get a $500 Gusto gift card to spend at any of those merchants. So we're just kind of like, this is, this is our way of like, let's keep building recognition up. It's our, it's recognition is part of the culture. It's part of what we think is really important. And even if you don't have a program, you can still recognize your employees through the Culture Stars program here at Gusto. So, um, John, That's awesome. any other last comments or anything that you want to throw in? No, thank you again for the conversation. I, I hope people found it helpful. And I we love talking about this stuff. So if anyone ever has any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can feel free to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, where I write a, a lot about the intersection of work and wellness. We also have a podcast. Um, so always down to explore and share learnings. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, working together more. Noah, thank you. Yeah, and me as well. And you like, uh, like John said, like both of our LinkedIn uh, profile links are right there on the slide. Feel free to reach out to either one of us if you have any questions about June or Gusto or just want to connect. I mean, we're, I'm always looking to connect with other HRs, professionals and talk shop. So thanks again, everyone. Reminder that you will get a recording of this. Um, and a list of awesome resources that John has provided on just how to think about wellness, that survey that he talked about in the presentation. Um, and so really excited to have those included in that email as well. So thanks again, John. Thanks to the team at June for providing all this stuff. And we will see you again in a month. Keep your eyes out on our webinar page for what's coming up next. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.